Hey everybody, this is Aaron from AaronsAudioCorner.com and I wanted to discuss some different measurement methods with you today when you're going to measure your speaker response in your room or in your vehicle and you're trying to figure out, you know, what house curve do you follow, what method is the best method to use, etc. So that's what we're here to do today. Generally, there are two different methods for measuring response. Uh, one method is to use just a microphone and pink noise and measure the response that way. The second method, which will not be discussed right now, is to do what is called a loopback method. And to not confuse you, I'll just basically state that that method is typically used to look for phase issues and to get timing response uh, resolved accurately as possible via a measurement. But again, that, that method is a little bit more complicated. I'll talk about that in a later video, but right now I'm just going to keep it simple and as to the point as I possibly can. In the first method, there is a single microphone used and you will play back pink noise either via a USB stick, CD, uh, you can do it coming out of Room EQ Wizard, REW, and you can measure the, the response that way. And that's probably the quickest and easiest way to get a RTA response. But within that realm, there are a couple different measurement methods that you can use. One being a moving microphone measurement method, which is where you move the microphone around in the headspace or the listening area. The other measurement method is to do what is called a, a single point measurement. And then you'll do multiples of those single point measurements and average them together. By single point method, what I mean is literally taking the microphone, placing it in one position, uh, sweeping the signal through REW with a sinusoidal sweep, and then moving the microphone to another position, sweeping it, moving the microphone. And in general, you'll get three to nine different measurements, and then you will average those all together in REW. That method, not, while not confusing really, is just an, another method that has a different set of rules on its own. But what I've done today is I have taken some general practices and I have laid them out already, and I will walk through those and show you how they can differ and what to pay attention to because you can get tripped up if you're using a house curve or a target curve to dial in your EQ to get the response that you want. So I'm just gonna illustrate real fast the moving mic method. You can do it one of two ways and, and I do both. It, it just kind of depends on what I'm trying to do. Sometimes I'll sit in my seated position, I'll hold the microphone, I will play pink noise and I will move the microphone around while I'm sitting there. The other option is to stand behind the seat or next to it move the microphone back and forth, side to side, whatever, this way. Uh, the difference there is obviously that you don't have your body in the way. And also with the first method holding it, you also wanna make sure that you have a 90 degree calibration file because the microphone is not pointing forward, it's pointing up. So make sure that you use the correct calibration file. The other method is the single mic method. And it involves you, like I said earlier, taking the microphone, placing it at different positions, and using a sinusoidal swept signal to measure the response. And then from those multitude of, spot, of responses, you will average them together using REW's built-in average feature. So what I've already done in this scenario is I have already taken measurements with those three different methods, and I'm going to try to walk through those as briefly as I can, but try to explain them so they'll actually make sense. So right now I've got REW open, I have nothing highlighted, nothing selected, but I will go through now and I will click open. Three measurement methods that I did earlier, all three of these were made using the single microphone method. One was placed to the left of the headrest, uh, to the, at the center, and then the other one was to the right. Then I took those three measurements, and I'm going to close those, and I averaged those into this measurement. What happens when you do the not seated version, which is kind of like the same thing. Instead of doing a single mic, instead of whoop, 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 and averaging them together, you would move the microphone around. You think, ah, oh, it should be basically the same thing, right? Well, not quite. It depends on how many single mic measurement methods, methods, measurements that you average together. And the resolution will get better the more you average together, but that takes a long time. So let's say that you instead decided to go with the moving, the moving measurement method instead, and uh, now you wanna compare. So what's the difference between moving the microphone versus averaging a few different sweeps? And you can see the difference here. Uh, in general, above about 200 Hertz or so, you've got a difference of 
anywhere from plus to minus 2 dB. And what does that mean? Well, that means that if you are trying to achieve a target curve response, for example, this is one that I've used in the past, you may be off anywhere from two to plus 2 dB to, to minus 2 dB or total of 4 dB, depending on where at you're trying to achieve the response on this curve. Now, one thing is the response measurements that I took that I'm showing you now were generated using a cheap Bluetooth speaker plugged into my computer. So this is not in any way supposed to uh, reflect what you would measure in your room or in your car audio system. This is purely for demonstration. But what you can see again is there is a difference between those two measurement methods. So let's see what happens then when you take the seated measurement method, again, holding the microphone up and moving it around your, your head area. And then you compare that to the not seated measurement method like that. Well, now you see some big differences, right? So we've got anywhere from 61, 60, almost 65, so three, um, kind of ballparking this, maybe another three or so, but the responses are wildly varied between you physically being in the seated area or not. I know a lot of people that prefer to sit in their seated position and measure the response using pink noise. And, and I do that too. I'm, I'm not necessarily saying any one method is better than the other. But again, the point is that all of these methods deliver different results. And that's important to know, especially when you're trying to achieve a target curve response, because you could be anywhere from 2 dB off to 5 dB off or more, depending on that exact measurement method. And that's just, you know, that's a lot. 5 dB in treble is a lot. That's the difference between having a, a good sounding system and a painful sounding system. Or, as in this case, the bass, if we're looking at uh, about 50 hertz, uh, 50 and then 45, so 5 dB on the bass response. So if, if I'm going to try to EQ that, I'm, I'm having a 5 difference in, or 5 dB difference in the bass, that's the difference again in it sounding good or it sounding very, very boomy, overpowering, uh, rattling your seat, causing tactile feedback, things like that. I mean, it's, it's not good, but you don't know which one is the best, me best method. Um, in general, I would tend to agree with those who say that the best method is to not be in the seated position. Now you would say, well, your body consumes space. Well, that's, that's absolutely true. But I think that most house curves are generated without somebody being in the seated position. Why do I assume that? Well, because everybody is different. I mean, if you take somebody that's 250 pounds and 6'6", versus somebody that's my size, and I'm definitely not that, their body would influence the response in a way that my body would not. And if I'm trying to compensate for effects of their body versus mine, then obviously things are gonna sound a whole lot different between those two different curves. Now with all that said, again, I don't know the best method. I'm not here to tell you what the best method is. I'm not here to argue that your method is wrong or right. I'm here simply to make you aware that there is a difference. And I think that it would behoove you to take time to understand the difference in your own situations and even measure these different methods and see what the response sounds like. I mean, you're definitely gonna know if you've got 5K, uh, what is that, Five about four, four and a half dB, you should hear four and a half dB hot at 5K if you're trying to EQ those differences. So I would listen, I would take the different measurements. This doesn't take much time, especially if you're just using a simple method like using pink noise. Again, I want to point out that there are differences in measurement methods, and I've got a whole, a whole bunch of other measurements that I've taken over the years. Uh, I've got binaural microphone measurement methods that are completely different than this because of head shadowing, especially when you are uh, listening at, to your speakers at a, at a far enough angle to where the, will block, the sound will be blocked by one, one side of your face to the other ear. Now that you're aware that there are differences, I hope that you take the time to go through your own measurement protocol to take different sweeps, um, use pink noise, move the mic around with you sitting in the seat versus you standing behind the seat, all, all of the different variations of that. It shouldn't take you much time. I mean, spend 30 minutes on this, listen to the differences and see what you think, and then see which one you trust more, and then go with that method. Now that does it for this brief video, and hopefully you've learned a thing or two. Uh, definitely enjoy looking at this kind of stuff and trying to think about it and, and figure out which way are the, the best ways 
to do things and which ones maybe are not. But in this case, I think it's going to depend on the user. I'm not going to argue with people over which method is necessarily their favorite method. Some cases I'll stand behind a seat and measure. Some cases I'll sit in the car and measure. Uh, sometimes I won't even measure at all. In general, I don't use house curves because of this kind of craziness. But if I'm using something like Direct Live, then I will use a house curve. And it's important to note with programs like that, you know, where it will have automatic EQ settings and things such as Direct Live, they don't tell you to sit in the seated position. And I think there's something to that. It's just food for thought. Anyway, I'm gonna to try to keep doing videos like this. These don't take a lot of time, but they, uh, they do require some, some effort for me to, to put into them a little bit beforehand. So I hope you appreciate it. I hope you learned something. And with that, I'm out. Have a good one.